Well, hey guys, you might just want to be on the lookout for ringworm this summer. In the U.S., we now have two reported cases of drug-resistant ringworm, and we're going to get into it in today's video. First of all, what exactly is ringworm? Don't worry, contrary to what you might think, no worms are involved. Probably it's called ringworm because the rash often, although not always, appears ring-shaped. This is a rash caused by not a worm, but rather different types of fungal organisms known as dermatophytes. You can have ringworm really on any part of the body. If it happens on the feet, a lot of people will refer to it as athlete's foot. When it happens in the groin area, you may hear it commonly referred to as jock itch because it is pretty itchy, but you can develop it on the scalp, the palms of the hands, the soles of the feet, the fingernails, in the beard area, really any body site can be affected. It's highly contagious, very itchy, and it's important that it be identified and treated as soon as possible because if not, the skin infection will spread out slowly to involve a more widespread area of the skin and you can also transmit it to other body sites. For example, you can have athlete's foot on your feet and then as you pass your underwear over your feet, put them on, you can bring that fungus up to your groin area and get jock itch. Now, for the most part, this is actually a pretty straightforward skin infection to treat. It can either be treated with a topical cream or ointment that has an antifungal medicine in it, or in some cases where the rash is maybe more widespread or it involves a hair, you might need to take an oral medication that is an antifungal to treat it. However, over the past 10 years in South Asia and some Middle Eastern countries, there has been the emergence of dermatophytes that are incredibly, incredibly resistant to the typical antifungal medicines used to treat well, ringworm. This newer fungus that is resistant to typical antifungal medications is called Trichophyton indotiniae. And while it has been around in South Asia and certain Middle Eastern countries for a while now, it's also made its way to other countries around the world. In Germany, there are a lot of cases actually. Switzerland, a few cases, France, Australia, Canada, Greece, Denmark, Belgium, China, and Vietnam. Ringworm caused by this fungus is highly, highly contagious, and it tends to involve a large body surface area and is incredibly, incredibly itchy. So we now have two cases here in the US. These cases were identified in New York City. A dermatologist in New York City has identified these two cases. One of the cases is a 47-year-old woman who had traveled to Bangladesh in the summer of 2022 and acquired a ringworm infection. And Bangladesh is one of the countries where you have a lot of this ringworm. She erupted in a rash all over her body and the typical antifungal creams did nothing to alleviate her rash. So this led the dermatologist to suspect that her ringworm was actually due to this drug-resistant trichophyton indotiniae. A second case actually involved a 28-year-old female who uh, has no travel history. Travel history is really important when we're talking about new and emerging rashes in a given country. Did you get it somewhere else where that type of uh, skin infection is more common. So this particular individual had no travel history outside of the US. She actually developed ringworm in 2021. Uh, in December of that year, she saw a dermatologist for the first time and she happened to be pregnant. So by January of 2022, she was started on antifungal medications that are typically given for this, did not respond. She was switched to another antifungal itraconazole and four weeks later, the rash improved. Ringworm infection with trichophyton indotiniae, it does not respond to oral terbenafine. That's the typical antifungal given for like ringworm. Topical antifungals are ineffective for this. Other antifungals like fluconazole, ketoconazole, griseofulvin, likewise, not effective. I suspect that we're going to see more and more cases of this drug resistant ringworm possibly throughout the summer. I say summer because like I said at the beginning of the video, dermatophytes really thrive in warm, humid conditions and sweat, they love it. So, you know, summer is a is a time period where you tend to see a bit more of the of the of the ringworm cases, although you can definitely see them in the winter time because again, they are contagious. So in the winter, we all come in and hang tight to one another, cling close, cozy up, and spread stuff from one another. So um, all that to say, I do, I do think we'll likely see more cases as the summer goes on. And truthfully, there probably are a lot of existing cases already here in the US that have not been identified. If you are a healthcare provider, definitely consider it if you have someone who has widespread ringworm, meaning covering a lot of area, body surface area, super scaly, super itchy, and you've tried first line topical antifungal treatments, you've tried oral antifungal with the 
Benefine and is not improving. You might want to consider trichophyton and dotinia in cases where you have widespread ringworm that's super scaly, super itchy, and you've already tried first line topical antifungals or oral terbenafine and the rash is not improving. If you've done testing for fungus and it comes up positive, you may be dealing with a, a case of drug resistant uh, dermatophyte. The travel history is really important. If you're a patient, make sure you tell your doctor, hey, I traveled to this country. You need to think back, have I traveled anywhere in the past year or so? Um, not just to South Asia or uh, certain countries in the Middle East, although those are the places where you see it the most. Again, it's already spread to other countries throughout the world, as I mentioned. It's just not super common yet in the US. The other thing about this and why a lot of cases might go missed is that in order to diagnose it, it requires a special test. Um, typically, uh, with, with dermatophyte infections, first of all, it's something that, you know, you just scrape a little bit of the flaky stuff off and look at it under a microscope slide with something called KOH, and you can see the fungus there and start treating. And then you, of course, also will send that flaky stuff off to the laboratory and they will culture it. But here's the thing, uh, trichophyton indotinia, it looks exactly like the, the other types of fungus, and so that's not gonna cut it. You actually have to send the specimen for specific testing, uh, ge genomic testing. And so that's you know not necessarily a test that everybody has in house. So it may require um, you know special testing and a send out. So how exactly is this treated then? If if the fungus is resistant to most typical antifungals, and if not treating it is going to lead to this widespread infection, it's super itchy, miserable. How how do you get rid of it? As it stands now, the treatment of choice, the thing that seems to be effective, is itraconazole. That is a medication you take by mouth. It's an antifungal, but it seems to do the job. However, it frequently requires a longer course, anywhere from four to eight weeks, up to 12 weeks. This medication can interact with other medications that you might be taking. So if you're a patient, you have to make sure that you are providing your doctor or healthcare provider with every single medication that you are taking, as well as any dietary supplements, because itraconazole can interfere with the metabolism of other medications, and that can lead to serious harm for you. For example, itraconazole can mess up the metabolism of statin medications and put you at risk for something called rhabdomyolysis. Uh, that's just one example, so all that to say, make sure you volunteer every single medication that you're taking and dietary supplements, and don't hold back. You should never hold back, but uh, this is a case where it definitely could cause harm. Uh, some cases are resistant even to itraconazole. Other alternatives are posiconazole or voriconazole. But in some cases, you might actually have to consult with an infectious disease specialist to, to help you tailor the treatment appropriately. This is a case where diagnosis is key. Getting on the right path to treatment is essential because as with any ringworm infection, if you don't diagnose it early and treat it appropriately, it's gonna spread and you can spread it to other body sites and you can spread it to other people in the home. I mean, it can really, really be a problem. But part of the reason why this drug resistant fungus has emerged is due to inappropriate use of topical steroids to treat what are actually fungal infections. And a lot of times people will have a fungal skin infection and they will go to the drugstore and pick up an anti-itch cream because they're super, super itchy. Anti-itch creams typically have steroid medication in them, hydrocortisone, for example. And what will happen is they'll put the hydrocortisone on there and it takes away all the symptoms right away. It just melts away the discomfort. Rash seems to clear up magically. But that is a lie. That is a lie because the fungal infection is in there going <laughs> quite literally. I mean, it's laughing at you. And, and really that's actually making the fungus worse because that topical steroid suppresses the immune system's recognition of the fungus. And that's you know part of why the symptoms get better, but it allows the fungus to really thrive and take off. And it can trickle down into the hair follicle. You can, you can really develop extensive fungal infections by using topical steroids. Like on the scalp, for example, you can get a full on uh, involvement of the hair follicle that leads to a scarring type of hair loss in an untreated fungal scalp infection. Um, but the other issue is that, you know, as it's suppressing the immune response, maybe you're also treating with topical antifungals, 
But because you've got that immunosuppressive aspect of the steroid on there, well, that's actually favoring the emergence of resistant microorganisms, of a resistant fungus. That, that it's like, you know, um, I'm going to switch things up on you, and this medication that you that typically wipes me out, I'm a lot stronger. And it selects for those stronger fungal organisms, and, and that's where you get emergence of, well, trichophyton endotineae, which is resistant. So if you have a scaly rash, A, make sure you get it diagnosed so you know exactly what you're dealing with, um, and, and B, don't just go arbitrarily treating it with an over-the-counter anti-itch cream because a lot of them have steroid in them that can make this worse. There are also over-the-counter antifungal medications. There's over-the-counter terbinafine cream, for example. If you are using those to treat a confirmed case of ringworm, make sure you use them exactly as directed and for the recommended duration. So as to not foster an environment that favors the emergence of resistant uh, fungal organisms. When it comes to skin rashes, always, always question, is this ringworm? Because ringworm, aka okay, tinea or dermatophyte infection, it mimics a lot of stuff, okay? A lot of things present as a round, scaly, flaky, itchy rash. Psoriasis, eczema, they can look a lot like a fungal infection. So you may have a fungal skin infection that has been misdiagnosed as something else, and you've been given a prescription for a steroid cream, which as I've outlined here, is only going to make it worse in the long run. Always think it could be, be a fungal infection. It is a great mimicker. And the last thing you wanna do is prescribe or give a topical steroid that in the long run is going to make it so much worse for the patient. It's never a bad idea to do a KOH exam on a rash. A KOH exam is basically a bedside test. It's very simple to do. You just get a little bit of flakes on a microscope slide and use something called KOH and look at it under the microscope. A fungal culture should be sent. That way you at least know you're dealing with a dermatophyte infection. You don't inadvertently give the patient treatments for things like psoriasis or eczema, which can look like, like ringworm. I mean, they can all look the same. Rule out a fungal infection. If you are a patient, don't assume that your scaly rash is eczema or psoriasis. If you're a patient who has eczema or psoriasis and you've been using your typical treatments on something and it's not getting better, that is a clue. It might actually be something else, namely, a fungal infection, a ringworm. Uh, so keep that in mind. When things are not responding as expected, you gotta dig a little deeper. All right, guys, so I wanted to make this video to bring this to your attention. The emergence of drug-resistant uh, microorganisms is definitely something that uh, it needs to be taken seriously. You know, on this channel, I frequently harp on the emergence of resistant microorganisms when it comes to bacteria. And I don't often, you know, highlight the potential risk of emergence of resistant fungi, but here's a case where we have resistant fungal infections emerging. As it stands now, trichophyton indiotinia is not a widespread issue in the US, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. You may have heard also in the news a few months ago that there have been cases of a drug resistant candidate. It's a different microorganism. It's a different set of health problems in comparison to dermatophytes, but same issue of a resistant uh, fungal organism. So we focus a lot on not overdoing it with like antibiotics, for example, so as to not favor the emergence of bacterial resistance to antibiotics. But we also have to think about the same approach when we're treating fungal infections so as to not favor the emergence of, of fungal infections that are resistant to our antifungals. Once you get a ringworm infection, whether it be the standard ringworm that's responsive to treatment or this, you know, uh, super bug, if you will. Uh, there are a few habits that you need to put in place, a few things you need to change up. On the end slate, I have a whole video on how to get rid of ringworm where I cover these things in detail. So definitely check that one out so you are prepared to handle ringworm uh, and do the right things so that you don't make it worse per se. So check that one out next. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.